Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I know what's in this. I think it is this, which is a Microsoft Xbox One S, one terabyte, white, faulty. I paid £50 for this, plus £7 postage. The description says, condition is for parts are not working. Light turns on for one second and turns off again. So, thought this one might be quite interesting. Never worked on an Xbox One S before, so I don't even know how to take one apart. So that's going to be fun, isn't it? So let's see if we can get in this. I'm not entirely sure what it's packaged in. This just looks like paper. Actually, wallpaper. Nice wallpaper. Wow. Alright, so it looks like it's just the console, which, uh, to be fair, it didn't say it came with anything else, but um, hopefully I've got... That just looks like a figure of eight. Oh, oh, I think it's been opened. Definitely looks like it's been opened. Okay, well, let's, um, let's hook it all up and see if we can replicate what it said in the description that it turns on and then turns off again. Okay, let's see if we can replicate the problem. Let's press the power button. Oh yeah, it's definitely turning on and turning off again, isn't it? It's making a little clicking noise as well. I don't know if you can pick that up on the microphone when it turns off. Yeah, a little click. Okay, well it's definitely not working, is it? So let's, um, let's see if we can work out how to take this thing apart and have a look. My goodness. There's some burn marks on the board. Um I think this is the retimer chip, is it? The HDMI encoder. Yeah, it looks like it's had some work done, doesn't it? Oh dear. Um, right, well, I'm going to have to get this board out and I have to have a look at that under the microscope, I think. Ah, I don't have high hopes for this now. This um, HDMI port looks different as well. I wonder if that's been replaced. Hmm. Right, let's get this under the microscope and let's have a close look at the uh, damage. Wow. It didn't look that bad from uh, <laughs> from far away, but gee whiz, close up, that looks bad. A massive blob of solder here. Wait, it's not massive, but it looks massive. Um, 
Oh, jeez. All these salt are just on all these traces as well. Like the trace has been burnt away in them. Oh. Oh, wow. And they look like they're touching each other as well. I'm going to check for... Um, check for some shorts Wow what if those two are connected together yes they are I don't know whether that's okay or not um So we've got this one. I don't know what that is. We've got this big mess here, which is obviously these two are definitely connected. Let's check these filters. Oh, I think they're okay. Have a look at this uh, HDMI port while we're here. It doesn't look great, does it? Uh, I can't tell. I just they look like they're all bridged together, but that might just be a shed load of flux. Um, bizarrely, that might actually be all right. I'd like to clean it up though because it's, doesn't, it's a lot of a mess. That might actually be okay. This, however, I don't think is okay. Right, well, I'm going to need to tidy this area up, aren't I? Chip is tiny. That's the end of a very small screwdriver. Uh, I think I'm going to have to take this chip off because I've got no idea what's going on under there. And I need to get rid of all this and do it again, I guess. Not looking forward to that. But hey, let's do it. That actually came off much easier than I thought it was going to. Let's see if I can get rid of some of this solder on the board.
Right, I still can't really see what's going on here. Um, this point, where are we? Here. So I just removed this, these two capacitors, which are now sat here. They were joined together here, which I think is okay because all this looks like one, one plane here. So I'm, I'm guessing they're okay to be touching. I don't think he's meant to be anything. I'm guessing, well, that solder doesn't want to come off. And here, I still can't really tell what's going on. But I think it might be the same thing. I think they might be connected anyway. Uh, I still don't know what they are, but they, I mean, they, maybe they are supposed to be shorting on both sides. I don't know. And I, and I don't know if there's anything missing. So I'm not doing very well here. Um, but I'm going to try and tidy this bit up here now and pop these two capacitors back on and then I'm going to try and put the, I don't know, should I put the chip back on? Yeah, I don't know. Let's tidy it up a little bit more first. In fact, I'm going to put these ones back on before I lose them. I think they're back on, but it's really difficult to tell. They, they, have a, they just want to stick together. Let's clean it up and see what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty much the same as it did before. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's as it was before, and it looks like it looks like it, it's right. Right, this this one here is not it's not shorting anymore. Um, obviously, I've taken the chip off. Right, I don't think anything what I've just done has made any difference. To be perfectly honest, um, I actually think even though it was a mess, that it was it was probably okay. Now I don't know whether to put the retimer chip back on or whether to put a different one on. Because hmm. the retimer chip is just the display, isn't it? So if the retimer chip is is not working, the Xbox would still turn on. Am I right? Pretty sure it would. All right, I actually think this this part of the board is is okay. I don't think it's anything to do with the fact that it's turned on and off. Um, I'm mean, sure it's a mess, but I, I don't think anything's out of place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the chip back on. Or I'm going to try to. I have no idea if this is uh, if I'm going to be able to do this. I haven't done this before, in case you were wondering. I've messed about with a Nintendo Switch Lite, but they were BGA. This is this is a different kettle of fish, and I didn't do the Nintendo Switch Lite ones very well either. It's upside down, that Steve. Right, I can see the dot there. Should marry it with that there, I think. That's kind of in the right place. Let's go with that.
Okay, so this one here, I think it was, was shorting before. Now it's not. So, mm, I don't know. It's definitely different than it was before. Pretty sure it was one of these two. It was definitely shorted on both sides. I've got my negative probe on ground here and it's not doing. Okay, well, I'm going to clean that up. It looks a complete mess, but it is doing something different than it was before. Let's clean it up and, uh, I don't know, put it back together. Okay, so I've just connected the hard disk drive and the power supply. And I'm not going to bother with anything else. So I just want to see if it you know, still does the same thing if it comes on and goes straight back off again. So let's try it. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good. Right, let's turn that off before it overheats. Right, so now it, it's not turning straight back off again. That could be... Well, haven't I got connected? Maybe there's a problem with a disk drive. Maybe there's a problem with the Wi-Fi card because I haven't put that in either. Um, or maybe it was just that retimer chip. But I find that I find that hard to believe. Right, I'm going to put more of this back together. I'm going to put the the fan back on, uh, the X clamp. I'll put the power supply in properly. I'll put the disk drive in. Put the Wi-Fi card in. I won't put it. You know, back in its shell completely, and then I'll try it again and see. You know, I'll see if it connects up to the TV. I suppose I've got it connected up to my little um, monitor that I use for my camera. There's no sound on it, but it should show picture. Hopefully. Oh no! Back to doing that. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, we're on. Fans on. I must have hit the button twice there. Still a blue screen. Ah. And now it's switched off. It's definitely an improvement on what it was when I first took it out of the package. It, it you know, it, it's staying on longer than a second. It's still not displaying anything on the screen, but it's staying on for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds or so. So there's obviously something, I was, I was going to say something else wrong. It might still be the retimer chip as well, but... Um, Whatever I did there has sort of progressed it into a another state of not working. So um, let's let's go back to it and see if I can see anything else. It's the next day now. Uh, I've reset up and I've got my blue mat out because I was making the right mess of this uh, this lovely white uh, white thing. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just test this HDMI port. Um, because I had a look at the pins before, and I wasn't sure whether some of them were bridged together. Um, so I'm just going to check it with the multimeter. And the easiest way is to use this little HDMI repair plug, which has got these the terminals on. Um, so some of them will be shorted together because there'll be grounds. Like those, for example. So we've got pin three and four here are showing together. Now I'm pretty sure they shouldn't be because the grounds are, are usually separated. We've got one and three together, one and four. To be fair, I think the rest, I think, so I think four might be a ground. Yeah, but three shouldn't be. So I don't know if that's a problem with the HDMI port itself or whether it's something to do with this chip that's pushing the signal there and it's shorting those together. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the HDMI port off because it's obviously had work done to it and I've got no idea what's going on underneath. So I think the safest thing to do <laughs> is to take it off. Now, I have taken off one off a of PlayStation 4 before, but I haven't taken one off an Xbox. So it'll be interesting to see if it's any easier or, or more difficult. I don't know. 
but the fact that it's had work on, I'm hoping it's got leaded solder on there rather than unleaded and it might come off a bit easier. But we shall find out, I guess. Let's get set up. It's quite awkward because of the, um, the way the HDMI port is. You can't see it under the microscope unless you tilt the board. So I've got it sort of set up with this little helping hand thing here. And it's. It, I'm worried it's going to move. But I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of leaded solder there just to see if that will help get this thing off. Right. I've got no idea how this is going to go, but let's. Uh, Right, sorry guys, I wasn't recording on the microscope. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's probably because I forgot to press the button. But never mind. Um, hopefully got the gist of that. I was just adding leaded solder to the to the legs just to try and help get it off. And now I'm going to apply some hot air. Uh, what temperature? Let's go 380. Let's try that and see if we can get this off. Did it fall out then? Right, it's out. It's out. It's uh, still smoking. Looks alright, actually. But I am not going to put it back in just in case it is. You know, there is something wrong with it. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to put a new one in. I've got a couple that I ordered up a while back that I haven't used, so I may as well use one of those. Let's have a look at the damage on the board, if there is any. Um, hmm. Let me just uh, get that zoomed in a bit. Alright, that one doesn't look too clever, does it? I'll tell you what, oh yeah, that's moving. But I think that is just a ground one, isn't it? So that's probably okay. Uh, let's um, let's clean this up. Just apply a bit of flux, and let's get some solder wick and try and wick off all this solder that's still on here. This is the solder wick that I've been using. I've got no idea if it's any good, but it seems to work quite well for me. Right, there we go, it looks a bit better now. So, let's go and grab. In fact, I need to clean up on this side, don't I? Yeah. Oh, for show. Sure. Okay, there we go. Looks a little bit cleaner. 
slightly worried about that pad because it is moving and I don't know I don't know whether it's going to make contact with that one when I put a bit of solder on it okay so this is the new HDMI ports right here this is the one I'm going to try and solder on so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get the couple of the legs soldered on at this side first, a couple of the pins, and then flip it over and, and try and solder in the ground pins. Now it's really difficult to get this at the right angle, so I'm probably going to have to turn it round. All right, that's the best angle I can get. So. In fact, I need, that needs to come up a little bit, doesn't it? God, this is really difficult. Well, for me, anyway. Bear in mind, I am a an idiot. All right, here goes. I'm probably just going to put a little bit, maybe one on each side or a couple on each side. So I'm going to tin the soldering iron, I think. I'm not going to put any solder directly onto these pins. I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on. And hope that I can get a couple of these pins on. How's that? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Well, let's just try and do that end one. That looks better. Yes. Right. Let's flip it over. And try and put the uh, solder the the feet in or the legs or whatever you want to call them. The pins, the feet, legs, pins, whatever. Yeah, happy with that. Right, let's go back onto the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to try and uh, make sure that these are all connected. Just quickly test those. Yep, 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 yep. I won't say yep for all of them, don't worry. Oh, I've got a moving one. I think that one's only moving because the pad's moving underneath with it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I don't like that. But which one moved? Which one was it? That one. The fifth one. Right, okay. I'm uh I'm happy with that. Yep, I think that looks okay. 
I will just quickly check that there's no uh, none of the pins are bridging together. I'll do that off camera, and then I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna see if we can uh, get any display on the screen. Right, so I've just popped it back together quickly. Um, I've just put the power lead in, and the everything's in basically. The hard drive, the disk drive, the fan is resting on the top. The power. So let's. Let's give that a try now. There we go, we've got the white light. Fan spinning up. I've already got my TV on the right input. No signal so far. There's still Xbox is still on though, which is really promising. Still no signal. I'm just going to leave it for a few seconds. Right, we're not getting any display on the screen. Um, but the Xbox is still on, and that's that's a good minute, I reckon, so far. I'm just going to leave it for a sec, but um, I, I don't really know what to do now. I, I think the HDMI port is okay. Uh, I will double-check it. I'm wondering whether it's that retimer chip, because obviously I, it was a mess. I've taken the one off that was, that was already there, and I put it back on. The, the reason I did that is because I assume that someone's already replaced it and they, they're going to have replaced it with one that works. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if the retimer chip causes a black screen. Because remember, this didn't start out as a black screen fault. This started out as a power on, power off immediately fault. Um, but I th I'm getting progress. It's, it's still on. It's still going. The fans go in. I'm just not getting a display now, so... Um, yeah, I mean, as far as I, I'm concerned now, it's one of three things, HDMI port, retimer, or hard drive, but I think with the hard drive, you would still get a display, it would display the error code, but I'm not, I'm not certain. Right, well, we're still on, we're still not getting a display, so let's, let's power it off. Let's let's actually just try doing it with the how, how do you do it? I think it's eject, sync, and then power, and then hold, eject, and sync. Let's try that. I got my hopes up there, but it's just the TV telling me it's going to turn off because it's not getting a signal. Okay, no, we're not getting anything still. So I'm going to um, get the board back out and I'm going to have another look at that retimer chip and the HDMI port. Just make sure we've got continuity from each of the outputs on the retimer chip to the to the HDMI port and make sure that those filters are still okay. I, I'm, I'm sure they will be, but I'll do that very quickly. If I find anything, I'll I'll report back. Otherwise, I'll um, I'll probably end up taking that retimer chip off and and tr trying to put a new one on. I think. So let's get this board back out. Okay, so I've got the board out and I've just gone across all the connections from the retimer chip to the filters and from the filters to the HDMI port pins here and everything is absolutely fine. I can't see any problems with that whatsoever. So I've saved you the uh, <laughs> the earache of listening to all the beeps. I did that off camera. So I'm pretty sure that 
everything, even though it looks a mess, and obviously bear in mind I didn't do this, this was already like this when I got it, I think it's actually okay. So I'm going to try and take this off and swap it with with another one and see if that makes any difference. Like I said before, it's confusing that they would do all this work and put a retimer chip on, you know, and not replace it with a new one or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the backstory to this console at all. So, but it's got to be worth a try because I'm at the point now where I'm, you know, I'm running out of ideas. So I'm just going to add some flux around the chip. I do exactly the same as what I did before. I'm going to whack some heat on it and get it off. Okay, let's do this. Came off nice and easy. Well, I don't think I'm going to clean those pads up because I've obviously already done that before and it's still got leaded solder on. I'm just going to get a replacement chip and I'm going to put it straight on. So this is the chip. Um, it was from eBay. I've no idea if it works, obviously, but I'm assuming it's brand spanking new and it will. go, there's the chip, let's just put some fresh flux down and let's give this a go Moved a little bit there, I'm hoping that's it now in place. So hard to tell. Well, it looks okay from here, but I think I'm going to have to get my eye loop on it. I think it's okay, I'm just a bit worried that it didn't, you know, sort of pull itself into place, or it did, but then it it moved again afterwards. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. Right, I'm not 100% convinced by this. It just didn't seem to go on nicely at all, but, you know, let's give it a go. Let's put it back together enough to test it, and let's see what it's doing now. Right, so for some reason now, I'm not getting any power at all. Um, and I don't really know what I've done. The power supply seems okay. Everything's connected. But I'm getting absolutely nothing. Um... And I don't know if it's this board or if it, you know, the the power on board at the front or whether it's something on the, the motherboard. 
but nothing is happening now. So I've completely killed it by the looks of it. Um, well, let's just disconnect the power supply. Let's see if we're getting voltage in the, on the power supply. So there should be 12 volts coming out of this, shouldn't there? So let's have a look. Yeah, 12 volts. 12 volts. 12 volts. So all those three pins there are definitely pushing 12 volts into the board. It's just not no, it's not turning on. I don't really know what I've done, to be honest. I'm not having much luck with this, am I? I'm going to take it back down to the, the board and just have a do a visual inspection, see if I maybe I've knocked something off. I don't know. But let me do that now, and we'll come back to it. So we've got the power connector here. I presume we've got these three capacitors here, which are you know, to, to keep the 12 volts uh, stable or whatever you call it. Um, so I think this should be the positive pin. That should be the negative pin. Let's try it. I've got my meter on continuity. Yeah, and we've got ground there. Not ground in there. Let's just switch the leads around. I've got my other probe on ground, by the way. You can't see that. Ground, 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 aha. Uh -huh. well, that's weird. No, I'm really confused. It was definitely doing it for a second there, but now it's not. What is going on? What what was it beeping for? And now it's not. Whoa, now I am confused. What on earth is going on? Okay, so I've switched them back. Now we've got black lead on ground. Uh, I don't know. Is that is that normal? Somebody can probably tell me. It's beeping for a bit and then and then not. I wouldn't have thought it was, but what do I know? Now that one is it's just, uh, something's not right. It's either <laughs> my multimeter is playing up, but there's something definitely strange going on there, and I don't really know why. I think something's putting a short on the 12 volt rail, which is completely not a nightmare because I don't really know how to diagnose that. The only thing I do know from watching, I think it was uh, Andrew Paul, is that down here below the CPU, if we rotate the board, I think these are the MOSFETs here. But I don't really know how to test them. And I think that they can, they can fail, but it's just weird that they would just decide to fail midway through, <laughs> you know, several of the faults. So I, I must have done something, but I, I just don't know what. So I'm going to do a bit of research and see if I can figure out how to test these, and then we'll see if they're good or not. All right, so I just watched a video by Andrew Paul uh, where he's got. I think it is on the Xbox One S. He's he's checking the MOSFETs for uh, to make sure they're good because he's got a short to ground somewhere on the 12 volt rail. Now I'm going to do exactly what he did, and we put the multimeter into diode mode, and then on the gate of the MOSFET, which is this one here, put the black probe and then the red probe on this end of the resistor. And I'm getting 0.6 volts. 
which I don't know whether you can see. Let's try that again. 0 0.6 volts. And then if we switch the leads around, so red probe on the gate, black probe on this, this side of the resistor, and I'm getting 2.1 volts. Now he was getting, I think it was 1.9 and 0 0.6. So the testing pretty much exactly the same. And I've just gone across the three MOSFETs here and they're all they're all giving the same readings. So I think that's a bit of a dead end. All right, just in case it's this retimer chip, I don't think it is. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to see if there's any power after that. I can't um I can't think of anything else. It's highly unlikely that this is going to do anything, but sort of clutching at straws now. Right, now that's off. I'm not going to bother putting everything back together because I can't be bothered. I would assume that it would still turn on. Ah, right, okay. So it was the retimer chip. Because it's now come on. Why though? Is it the wrong one? Have I got the wrong one? Is it faulty? Did I put it on wrong? Yeah, thank God for that, I suppose, is what um, I should be saying. I haven't completely killed it. So what do I need to do now? Do I, shall I put that retimer chip back on? Or shall I put the one that was already on it on? Uh, apologies if this video is going on forever. <laughs> I'll try and um, try and edit it down to something watchable. But I mean, this is real life. This is <laughs> these are the struggles. Right. Do you know what? I'll, I'm going to go with the original one, the one that was already on, which is this one, and I am going to hope that. It just wasn't on properly. Because let's be honest, the, I mean, the area is, is a mess, and it was a mess. So it's very possible that the chip is actually okay, and that, you know, it just wasn't making a good connection. Right, so we're all back together now. Um, HDMI cables in, power cables in. To be honest, I just want to see if we can get you know some power back into this now. So I'm just going to try switching it on. Yes, white light is back. Excellent, fan is spinning. And oh my god! <laughs> yes, it's come up on the TV. It says something went wrong, but at least it's come up on the TV. Excellent. Uh, system error E105. It looks a bit, it's still a bit artifacty, if that's the right word. Sort of red dots running through the screen. System error E105. Right, what does that mean? Let's um, see if we get connect the controller up. Yes, we can. Right, let me quickly Google that error. Wow, while I'm Googling it, can you hear the fan speed really kicking up? I think the thermal paste needs uh, replacing. I think I'm going to turn this off before it overheats. Yeah, obviously I've not got the, the clamp on. And the thermal paste is probably worn away. I've got a lot of it on my hand, for example. Um, but now I know that at least I'm getting something on the screen... I will replace that thermal paste and I'll pop the X clamp back on uh, and I'll clean it up and I will try and get this back together a bit better um, and then I'll I'll do some research on the error code I'm, I'm guessing it might be the hard drive how many faults has this thing got seriously um, but 
yeah, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. I love how shiny they look when they're clean. Right, let's get the perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. Don't say it. We're all back together. Um, I've not, obviously not, put it properly in its case, but the X clamp is on now and the fan is tight to it, so hopefully it won't uh, overheat straight away, so let's try turning it back on now. Excellent, still going, white light. TV's gone off, let's turn the TV on. There we go, we've got, we're back to something went wrong. Which I never thought I'd be uh, so grateful to see. Something went wrong, love it. Right, let's try troubleshooting. Let's reset this Xbox and remove everything because I don't care about what was already on there because it ain't mine ah oh E102 it's changed now to E102 what's the difference does anybody know Google will know right I've been doing this for so long that my light has just gone out the battery's obviously died so I'm going to recharge that, um, and it looks like I'm going to have to download an offline update, or certainly that's what it looks like from a quick glance on Tinternet. So I'll do that, I'll prepare that on a flash drive, and then I'll come back to this. Okay, so I've put the update file on this little USB flash drive, so I'm going to insert that and I'm going to power it on that's always a good sign we've got a green flashing light on the USB drive that's also good Put the TV on yes and we've got that screen again don't like the fact that it's got those red blobs on but I'm hoping it's because it's at a really low resolution Troubleshoot offline system update. Yeah, those red. Mm. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Now it's a different error, E100. Oh, good grief. Everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong on this one. This is taking me so long. Uh, right, it's just one thing after another with this. So I've just searched up the error code that's just come up there. And it looks like there's a problem with the, the Blu-ray drive. So the... It's hanging at that point because it, it can't detect the Blu-ray drive. So it's either not an original Blu-ray drive, as in it's been swapped out from another console, or it's faulty. I mean, it is making a noise. But it's not, uh, it's not recognising it, which is what's hanging up the... The update so <sighs> I'm starting to lose the will to live but I'll have a look at it and see if I can see anything obviously wrong with it I don't really know what to do if it isn't the original drive and the it is married to the motherboard I guess I'm kind of buggered the, the more I think about this the more I suspect this has been put together with you know knackered parts the hard drive wasn't working the Blu-ray drive doesn't look like it's working. It had the 
retimer chip HDMI port. I, yeah, I'm losing track. <sighs> anyway, onwards and upwards. Well, onwards anyway. <laughs> I don't believe it. This cable wasn't in properly. That definitely wasn't me. That <laughs> oh, I hope that's it. Let's try again. Oh, Jesus. God. I really, really hope that's it. Right, should we try again? 27th time lucky. It's already got past 59%. Oh. Look at that. The picture's cleared up as well. It's a lot clearer now. I'm glad I, I persevered with that. And it's at 1080p, just noticed. Yeah, so that, oh, brilliant. I've never wanted to see an Xbox One logo more in my entire life. That is unbelievable. I'm so, so happy. Get in there. Oh. Wow. Oh. I'm, I'm physically and emotionally drained from this one. Right, before I go any further, I'm going to put it fully back together, as in I'm going to put the case on, I'm going to put all the screws in, all that gubbins, and then I'll come back to this, and then we can properly test it out and make sure it works. Okay, so that's it, fully back together now, giving it a clean. It looks, uh, it looks really quite smart. It went together quite nicely as well, so I'm um, really pleased with that. So let's just give it a final test, shall we? There we go, it's powered on using the controller. And there she is on the TV. Um, so, let's just check the resolution. So we're at 1080p, and if we just try 4K, 4K works as well. There we go. 4K works. It's it's going to go in a room where 1080p is used, so I'm going to leave it at 1080p. Let's just try popping a disc in, see if that works. It's wearing up nicely. Come on. Excellent. There it is. We'll do that later. Let's just give it a quick test with uh, a little bit of Ms. Pac-Man. Right, so this this was a real roller coaster. This for me, um, 
I mean, the original fault on it was that it turned... You know, it, it turned on, then turned off within a second. Um, but it quite clearly had some work done on the retimer chip and the HDMI port. Um, so once I took off the retimer chip, put it back on, you know, it got rid of the one second on and off, but then it was, you know, a minute on and off. Yeah, I've lost track of how many times I took the, um, the retimer chip off and put it back on again. But... You know, eventually, in fact, I don't even know which one is on. I can't remember whether it's the one that was with it or the one that, you know, that I, my new one. Um, but either way, it, it, it appears to be working. So, and you, obviously I changed the HDMI port over as well. I, I mean, it's it's difficult to pinpoint exactly what the problem was. But quite clearly that retimer chip that was soldered on wasn't done properly. It was a, the board was a mess. You know, it, it looked like I'd done it. <laughs> um, but you know after taking it on and off several times it's it's working okay now uh, in fact it's working more than okay it's working perfectly so I'm really happy that it's that it's working it was just it was a real roller coaster of emotions um, I'm just I'm, I can't believe that I got it working to be perfectly honest it's you know as soon as I saw it I was like no I've got no chance for this but anyway it's working uh, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. It was, you know, this uh, this one had a bit of everything for me. So, you know, thanks again for, for everyone's support. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more quality content. Or oh, they're pretty average content sometimes. But, you know, I'm getting better. A bit. <laughs>